So we'll just get started. Thank you everyone for joining uh, this afternoon for our webinar on accessible ag tech for South African food, food growers. Uh, we have organized this in uh, joint collaboration with uh, Hortec, uh, Blue, uh, Blue North uh, Sustainability and Farmable. And uh, it's a one hour session that we have planned today. We have four speakers and we will uh, basically be organizing it in a way that the first, uh, we will be speaking for about 40 minutes. So 10 minutes for each speaker and it will be followed by a Q&A session at the end. Uh, we will organize breakout rooms so you can go into the respective breakout room if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with the speakers. I also wanted to let you know that the session is being recorded. So if you prefer not to be recorded, you can turn off your cameras and uh, that way we will continue recording, but uh, you will not be covered in it. So to get started, uh, we will have uh, speakers in the following order. We have Albert De Vries from, uh, who is the HOD at iLeaf from Hortec, uh, followed by Annaline Smith, who is the tech coach at uh, Fruitlook. Uh, part of Blue North Sustainability, followed by Chantel uh, Smith, Smith, who is the project lead for Pixo Farm, uh, which is also uh, been appointed by uh, Pixo Farm is appointed uh, Blue North Sustainability, and uh, followed by uh, finishing it up with uh, K Hope, who's the chief commercial officer at Farmable. So to get started, I'd like to introduce uh, Albert, who is uh, the HOD for iLeaf. Uh, which is part of Hortec. Uh, Hortec is a diverse company with uh, various services in the agricultural industry. And their services, along with the iLeaf platform, assists growers and commercial clients to make better decisions and save money on input costs. So as the head of iLeaf, uh, Albert uh, strives to keep a personal relationship with all their clients, and that's what he is looking to do today. So over to you, Albert. Thank you, Vidi, for the introduction. Um, if you can just... Okay, welcome all. Uh, let's get stuck in. Hortec, as a company, have three divisions. Firstly, we've got analytical services where we focus on pesticide residue analysis. Uh, we do this for all commodities, and we are SANAS accredited for that. A second division of Hortec does fruit quality services on all stone and foam fruit. We provide growers with optimum harvest windows. This service assists growers in planning harvest teams, amount of crates, and let the farmer harvest the best quality fruit for their clients. Today's focus, however, will be I leave weather services. Just get this slide. And we'll be focusing on the I leave application and how we apply weather services. First off, let's discuss the hardware. Pictured here is the Stratus 200, our newest model of weather stations. The importance of a no moving part weather station is that the risk of bearings breaking is extremely little. The Stratus measures, measures temperature, relative humidity, rain, wind speed, wind direction, and solar radiation. The station connects via a 4G modem and transmits data every five minutes. Our weather station is completely autonomous. All stations have their own solar panel and a small battery, which makes them extremely low maintenance. What makes our weather stations different is the data quality. We have a dedicated iLeaf team and, adva and advanced AI systems to ensure a complete data bank. The ability to have accurate and consistent data ensures that the best possible answers can be derived from it. The second big aspect of iLeaf is the software. In this slide, you can see the basic, oh, sorry. <laughs> so the iLeaf software is a web-based application 
where you have a login and you can see your actual logger data, a 10 day forecast, as well as the forecast history. Now, where do I access my weather station information? In this slide, you can see the basic interface of what the iLeaf web app looks like. We will discuss the critical elements of iLeaf from this point onwards. And iLeaf is an ever expanding product and we try to add models on a quarterly basis. The most used weather data applications in iLeaf must be frost forecasting, which you can see here. as well as the spray conditions, which you can see here. Let's focus now firstly on, on frost forecasting. The forecast you get by logging into iLeaf is done by a well-known well -known South African meteorologist. We understand and know South African conditions and climate. The frost forecasting model is based on forecasted weather data. The weather forecast is an ILF specific to your GPS location. Measured data from your station is applied to calibrate your weather forecast going forward. That's what makes us different. That's how we get the most accurate weather forecast and set ourselves apart from free weather applications. Knowing your frost risk is extremely valuable. And an SMS notification of the current temperatures on your farm can be sent to your phone and action can be taken against frost. Secondly, let's look at weather models. Weather models is used to display measured data in usable information. Here we can look at accumulated cold units for rest break. All the other types of models is different applications for different commodities. We also do a vapor pressure deficit model, as well as calculating hours below a specific temperature and above a specific temperature. For now, I want to focus a bit on, on cold units. Cold units are is used mainly as a rest breaking measurement. So the more accurate you measure your cold units, the more accurately you can time your spray. Another valuable weather model is the Delta T model. This model is used for assessing spray conditions. On the weather dashboard, you can see the exact conditions and instruct your spray cards accordingly. Weather information can be used in insect modeling. Insect modeling goes hand in hand with what growers are already doing on their farms. When scouting and monitoring orchards, unwanted insects and pests can be found and then action can, can be taken. These models are South African research based and we trial each model before releasing it. Take the potato tuber model, moth model for instance. This model was researched in partnership with Potatoes SA. And if we look at the Collingworth model that was researched and developed in partnership with the South African Table Grape Association. We'll now take a look at the practical application of a Collingworth model. Most insect physiology works on a day degree model. The biofix date that you see in the top left is the day that you've caught two adult moths in your trap. We map the forecasted data and the same conditions as your previous year to accurately predict spray dates for more targeted sprays. By spraying a targeted approach rather than with a calendar schedule, your results will be much better. Using a targeted approach also assists the grower in planning spray activities. Tying insect modeling into disease modeling, here you can see all the different diseases that we currently model with weather data. Most fungi and spores and diseases grow better in weather conditions where you have hot temperatures, high humidity, 
low wind speeds and higher rainfall. These conditions create favorable conditions for fungi and spores to grow. By measuring these indicators and putting them into disease models, we assist farmers to manage these diseases. At the bottom here, you can see the, the citrus black spot model. This model is recognized by the Citrus Research Institute of South Africa. For the next bit, I want to dig into the Botrytis blueberry model. Marley van der Merwe, one of South Africa's leading entomologists and part of the iLeaf team, has developed this Botrytis model in, on blueberries in association with one of the biggest blueberry exporters in South Africa. Using weather conditions, a mathematical model, and knowledge about the disease, Botrytis can be mapped into a risk model. Displayed in this slide, we can see your risk period. When the infection score is above 500, a spray is recommended. On the right-hand side of the graph, forecasted rain is used to assess your coverage of what you've already sprayed, and you can take preventative action if your infection score goes above 500. Now, why would someone get a weather station? Throughout this presentation, we've seen how weather information can assist in decision-making on a farm. Knowing your spray conditions and frost forecasting is a huge bonus when planning activities. Cost savings and accuracy of sprays is our goal for growers. And with an accurate weather forecast, growers can be much more specific and targeted. What we haven't touched on in this specific presentation is evapotranspiration. This figure is also available in iLeaf and is incorporated in your precision irrigation. Accurate evapotranspiration leads to less irrigation water used, less electricity because your pump runs much less. Accurate weather information applied correctly enables the grower to understand mother nature much better and anticipate her next move. Accurate data in the form of information is a cardinal tool for every grower. I'm looking forward to see you all in the breakout room that we'll have afterwards. Thank you everyone for listening. And I think Lily will take over now. Thank you, Albert. Uh, as uh, Albert mentioned, if you have any questions that you would like to ask him directly, we do have breakout rooms at the end of the presentations. Uh, if there is something you believe would benefit all of us, feel free to type it in the chat and we can raise it uh, once the presentations uh, are done. Uh, thanks once again, Albert. I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Annaline Smith. Uh, Annaline has always had a passion for agriculture and went on to study BSc in uh, agriculture and horticulture and genetics. She started a career as a lecturer in pomology and later uh, horticulture at the Elsenberg Agricultural Training Institute, where she lectured for five years. Currently, she is working for a sustainable and regenerative agricultural consultancy firm, Blue North Sustainability, as a tech coach. Uh, while finishing up her MSc in agriculture, um, in horticulture. Annaline provides training and support on the Fruit Loop platform to the producers of Western Cape on how to use it as optimally and efficiently as possible. And she's been doing this for the last uh, four years. So welcome, Annaline. Over to you. Thanks, Vidi, for the introduction. I'll just quickly share my screen here. Yeah, is that correct now? Okay, great. Thanks so much for the introduction. Um, so yes, uh, I'll quickly run through uh, Fruit Look for you guys uh, to just show you what exactly is it. So what exactly is Fruit Look? So Fruit Look is a web-based data that uses satellite-based <clears throat> data to analyze fields and orchards for 
uh, parameters like growth, water, and nitrogen. And it is created by a Dutch company called eLeaf. Um, it is 100% subsidized by the Department of Agriculture Western Cape and Blue North Sustainability, the company that I work for, um, are the implementation partners for Fruitlook um, in, in the Western Cape. So because it's 100% subsidized by the Western Cape Department of Agriculture, it is free for anyone to use. And as you can see here, this is the area that we cover. It's about 9.5 million hectares, and we provide data for nine different parameters every single week um, uh, for right throughout the year for 12 months. Um, we've been providing 12 months of data since 2018, and prior to that, it was first nine months, and prior to 2016, it was seven months of data. So Fritlick actually started in 2010, um, was the first year. Uh, so it, this is the, its um, 11th year going strong and still subsidized by the department. Um, so it's a once-off process where you register for yourself a profile and then you load your fields onto it. And then every year you just reorder the data. So this area that you cover, we'll see it's not the entire Western Cape. It's only about 75% uh, of the agricultural um, area in the Western Cape. And you can see here, we go slightly over the border into the Eastern Cape to include the Longcliffe. Um, we are just slightly east of, of Ubertina. So we include the majority growing region of the Longcliffe as well. So why would someone use Fruitlook? Fruitlook, first and foremost, is not there really to, to replace any other product. It's an it, um, provides producers with an additional layer of information to help them make more improved decisions regarding their resource management to help them improve and even out their production. And at the end of the day, which is kind of the big picture of Fruitlick is how do we improve the water use efficiency of your fields? How do we get a bigger crop per drop? That is what we are trying um, to achieve with Fritlock. So first, the other thing is uh, don't look too hard at the name, even though it's called Fritlock because the, it originally started in the fruit industry. It is not just for fruit. If it's green and it grows, we can measure it. So it can be from pastures, vegetable production, natural uh, vegetation. If you want to use it to monitor uh, growth in your conservation areas of the clearing alien invasives, um, field crops, you name it. Like I said, if it's green and it grows, uh, we can measure it. And let's quickly have a look at how the tool exactly works. So we get uh, satellite data in, we use four different satellites um, of and their data that we process, then we pull in geographical data and then weather data. So we actually make use of Hortex um, weather data. We buy data from 63 of their stations in to subsidize our weather data that we get from satellites to make it more specific. Um, and in situ. And then all of this information then gets processed by ELU's pie mapping technology to create these smart pixels. And then the only thing that we get from the website itself is the farm boundaries uh, that the producers of the field uh, that the producers join of their fields. And we use that as a cookie cutter to cut out their data for them. And then this last step is where um, you and I come in as what what do we do with that information? How do we um, how do we turn this information that we get? Um, uh, what this data that we get into usable information, uh, information that we can use to improve our yield, um, to maybe optimize our irrigation, to at the end of the day, save money. So when you open a field, this is what you will see. For each of the parameters, you'll get a change in time. Um, and then for each uh, point in time, you will then also see a pixel map associated with it, which will then give you a, a, a change in space. And the great thing about this is that this data is created without any input from the farmer. You don't have to go onto the website to refresh it. It's automatically uploaded. So when you log in, everything is there. So our new season actually started now in August. Um, so to make sure to reorder your data for the new season. Let's have a look at some of our data products. Like I mentioned, we have nine and they categorize into three categories, growth, moisture, and mineral. If we look at the first category of growth, um, the first one is biomass production. And that is how much biomass has been produced that week. It's not your total biomass, it's how much um, was produced that week. So you can look at your biomass graph as your 
uh, growth tempo for the season. Uh, and in your vegetation index um, is an index that runs between 0 0.15 and about 0 0.8 or 0.75 really. And that is an indicator of not only how healthy your canopy is, but also how dense your canopy is. Your leaf area index um, is a snapshot of um, your whole area and it gives you a square meter leaf surface per square meter soil surface. So it's an, an indicator of how dense your canopy is, or you can look at it as the size of your biological uh, solar panel that you're producing energy um, with. When we look at our water data products, and these are our three most important ones, um, along with uh, biomass production, is the first one is our actual evapotranspiration, our actual ET. Now, our actual ET values is equivalent to, if you take that ETO zero times the crop factor, so you get that ETC, that is the equivalent of our um, actual evapotranspiration. But we use the ET look model, um, and it does, it works on energy balances, so it does not take into consideration the crop factor. Um, but it's kind of, because it works on energy balances, um, it, it's written into it without adding a crop factor. And then when we look at our ET deficit um, or evapotranspiration deficit, that is how much did our actual evapotranspiration deviate from ideal conditions. So that's not necessarily that that's how many millimeters you irrigated too little. It just means this is how much it deviated from ideal growth and growing conditions. Then our biomass water use efficiency is exactly what it says. How much biomass was produced per cubic meter of water that was consumed? So we um, changed the millimeter per week to cubic meter per week. And that's how we then calculate our kilograms per cubic meter of water for biomass water use efficiency. And how you should read that is the higher biomass water use efficiency value you have, um, the larger component of transpiration you have um, to evaporation. Transpiration is our useful water use and evaporation is a useless water use. Then our mineral data products, we have nitrogen in the upper leaf layer, which is measured in kilograms per hectare. And it's basically what the satellite sees, the same as what you see in that picture. Um, and it many, many, uh, measures how much uh, kilogram per hectare nitrogen there is. Then we also have a total plant or present nitrogen plant, where we measure that um, present nitrogen in the upper, um, upper leaf layer or the above ground growth. And we take that upper leaf layer and incorporate the leaf area index into, to then get um, that value. So there's three main ways how you can use it throughout the year. The first one is to um, plan your season. And to do that, you need to understand what these values and pictures mean for you. And then we can look at um, making our plan to see, you know, where's, where's our benchmarks. And then as the season progresses, you then use Fruit Look to monitor your fields and to help you identify problems before they become a, a, a real issue. And then as the season ends, that's when we start looking at um, our evaluation stage. That's when we do seasonal analysis, um, what worked, what didn't work, um, can we change something, where do we need to go take soil samples, um, and investigate possible issues. And then we take those lessons that we learned from the season and integrate that back into the plan for the next season. So there's a useful fruit look throughout the year. It's not just during the growing season. And then just here's some practical examples of how fruit look can be used. Uh, this is an instance of where a very uh, young planted um, newly citrus block had a blocked sand filter There you can see the straight lines. There's very few straight lines in nature. Most of them are man-made. So that was an indicator that something is wrong. We can see here in the biomass production as well, very low growth. They fix that. And as you can see, six weeks later, there's almost no trace of that block sand filter issue that was there. Here's another example. Uh, I was approached and it, the, the, the producer told me what's interesting is it's one irrigation block, but the one side of the block um, had much smaller fruit than the other side. So when, and he looked at his field as a unit, so I split it into two. And what I noticed was it's for rich lady peaches. Um, what I noticed was right here at the end of October, you could see that the one block experienced a little bit more stress than the other. And that's in a crucial fruit development stage for rich ladies. Mm -hmm. And that uh, led to the much smaller fruit on, on the one side 
compared to the rest. So then we, then I said, okay, yes, it's one irrigation block, but there's two valves, so maybe you should break it up into smaller management units and manage them differently for crucial times of the season because there are some soil differences there as well. And that was very quick, really. Um, but if there's uh, uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me. Um, Annalina at Plunov.co.za, or there's my cell phone number, or you can contact um, Dianka Eisel. She's also the project uh, manager for Fruitlook and application coach, um, and there's her contact details. And if you are interested in attending one of our webinars, please go to our website, or you can go to any of our social media channels. We are on LinkedIn, we are on Facebook, and we're also on YouTube. So our YouTube channel has quite a few tutorial videos. We have a set of our webinars um, on there, but also small tutorials on specific aspects um, and yeah that's my that's my story and if yeah join me in the breakout room if you have any more specific questions regarding fruit look thanks Billy. yeah thanks Annalyn, for that uh, extremely detailed presentation i'm sure a lot of people would be asking you questions on how exactly the charts uh, and graphs would work for their farms and their fields so, thanks a lot uh, so just to reset uh, the the webinar, we've had a few new people joining in while uh, Albert and Annaline were presenting. So this is a joint webinar that uh, Hortec, Blue North Sustainability and Farmable have jointly organized for uh, bringing accessible ag tech for South African fruit growers. And uh, depending on how uh, useful you find these webinars and if you'd like to see more of it, the way we are looking at it is building a series that then would we'll just continue uh, after this webinar as well. So uh, as Annalene has also mentioned, please follow us on the respective uh, social media channels and free, feel free to reach out to all the contact details that uh, the respective presenters have put. So um, I also realized I didn't introduce myself. I'm so sorry if you are wondering who is this person talking and introducing others. Uh, so my name is Vidhi Kumar and I work with Farmable in marketing. And uh, I really enjoy talking to growers and uh, understanding how to build solutions for the agricultural industry um, and how technology can help in that. So again, feel free to reach out to me as well if you have ideas or discussions that you'd like to have uh, around ag tech and uh, anything that we can collaborate on. So having said that, we'll move on to our third presenter for the day, uh, Chantal Smith. She is the project lead for uh, Pixo Farm at uh, Blue North Sustainability. Uh, Blue North has been appointed by Pixofarm to act as their South African implementation partner. And uh, this collaboration aims to support the rollout of Pixofarm in the South African fruit industry, initially with a focus on apples. And Chantel provides training and support to Pixofarm users in South Africa. So with that, I hand it over to you, Chantel. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, we can see your screen. So maybe if you present, yeah, it's okay. in presentation mode. Great, let's give this another go. Thank you everyone for being patient with my internet issues today. <laughs> okay, so good afternoon everyone and welcome to this presentation where I'm gonna give you some more information about an application called PixoFarm. So as Vidi has already mentioned, my name is Chantal Smith and I work at Blue North, which is a sustainability consulting practice based in Stellenbosch in South Africa. So um, yeah, as Vidi has already explained, Blue North has been appointed by Pixo Farm to act as their South African implementation partner. So what this basically means is that Blue North is supporting the rollout of Pixo Farm in the South African fruit industry, initially with a focus on apples. So what is PixoFarm? PixoFarm is an application that you can download on a smartphone that is designed to enable the accurate measurement of apples through the fruit growth phases and to consolidate and report this information. So the value of this tool has been uh, recognized by relevant organizations, as you can see by the awards listed on this slide. So these are quite impressive awards given to PixoFarm at various contests and events in Europe. And there is actually already many users of Pixo Farm in more than 15 countries. And hopefully we can increase the number of users in South Africa. So Pixo Farm can be used for fruit counting, fruit size measuring and forecasting. 
And I am going to explain these three um, features in the next few slides in a little bit more uh, detail. So the fruit counting function in Pixar Farm can be used to answer questions like how many apples are in a specific block or orchard, or how many apples are you going to harvest? So fruit counting is done by taking pictures on your cell phone of the trees, and then Pixar Farm counts the number of the apples on the tree. So the application has a smart algorithm built in to calculate the hidden fruits. I'm going to show you guys a video of what fruit counting would look like in the field. Yeah, hopefully it's not um, too delayed, but the point of the video is just to show you that you will stand about two meters away from the tree. You will take a picture and then you will draw in a boundary layer around the canopy to demarcate which tree you are focusing on. And the point of that is just to exclude the tree next to it so that the, the app doesn't count the, the apples on the tree, the neighboring tree. And then, yeah, you know, when you're done drawing in that boundary layer, you would approve the picture if you're happy with it. And then you would just move on to the next uh, tree. So it really is as easy as that. So then the size measuring function in Pixar Farm. Um, can be used to answer questions like what is the average size of your apples in your block or how big are your apples going to be when you harvest? So fruit size measuring is done by once again, just taking a picture on your cell phone, but this time of apples, and then Pixar Farm helps you measure the size of the apples in the block. I'm going to show you guys another video of what this would look like in the field. So you'll see there's a sticker placed on the apple and that is used by the application as a reference point, and then it detects the diameter and it gives you the size measurement. So once again, that is yeah, how easy it is. It's just taking pictures. So then we get to the forecasting feature. So the forecasting feature can help you know what you are going to harvest. So what this means is that Pixar Farm has an algorithm built in that can help you predict the diameter of your apples their weight and size class distribution, and the total production of your orchards. So you also get a dashboard view of your data, which is very useful. So this is where you can log in on your computer and see all your data about a specific block. You can also extract data and share with others. And then there's also an analytics section on your dashboard where you can compare data across different blocks and look at your data in more detail. I'm going to show you guys a quick video of a user live in their uh, dashboard. So at the top, you can see all the information the user entered about their specific block. So this person used the forecasting feature. Therefore, you can see sizing and counting metrics, as well as the predicted size and yield at harvest. So there's also size and weight loss distribution graphed. If you hover over, you see more details. Below that, you can see weather data. And below the weather forecasting data, you'll see the measurement uh, history graph and then also listed below it. Once again, if you hover over, you see more details. Then um, on your dashboard, you can also go to the gallery section to view all the photos that you took. So over there, you can see the size measuring pictures, and you're, you're also able to see the fruit counting um, pictures that you took, so the photos of the trees. So Pixar Farm is very easy to use, and to get going, you just add a block, you take pictures, and then you get results. And then, yeah, we are here to help you every step of the way. So part of the Pixar Farm service is that you can always get in touch with someone that will be able to help you. So if you're situated in South Africa, you can also contact us at Blue North and we can provide varying levels of infield support, uh, ranging from training the scouts to setting up all your blocks and doing the setup process for you. So what makes Pixar Farm unique? The application provides accurate and reliable results. It can lead to increased planability. It is an effective approach. Uh, all you need is a smartphone. And you can pay one price for unlimited measurements. And there's also a lot of flexibility in the tool. You can add multiple users and you can also use the application on multiple devices. 
It can lead to efficient and sustainable resource management, and it also allows the user to take informed decisions. So this slide is just to give you an idea of the price and to also mention that the user has the option to only use and pay for the sizing or the counting features if that is their specific need on their farm. So lastly, I would like to share what is planned next for Pixel Farm. So the fruit bearing capacity is where you will be able to define a target size and then the app tells you how many apples you need to leave on the tree after thinning. And then the post harvest solution is where you would take pictures of the bins and then the app gives you the size class distribution of the harvested apples. So you would know the size class distribution before the bins leave the block. And then lastly, there's new fruit types that's going to be added. And at the moment, the focus is on citrus and pears. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, please contact us if you've got any questions. Also feel free to join the Q&A um, uh, Q and A session where I will be joined by Federica from Pixofarm. So if you're keen to hear some more details, join us in the, the Pixofarm breakout room. All right, thank you so much, uh, Chantal, for that presentation. We'll move on to our fourth speaker, uh, who is a fellow co-worker at uh, Farmable, uh, Kay Hope. She is the Chief Commercial Officer at Farmable, and uh, she is, spends most of her time uh, talking to growers to better understand how they use technology today and what their needs are for better software in the future. Uh, as a Canadian living in Norway, she loves speaking with farms from around the world and finding the common threads. So over to you, Kay. Great. Thanks, Vidi. Much appreciate that introduction. Um, I'm very uh, excited to have a chance to connect with each of you here this afternoon, and I, I really am grateful that I have a co-host. So Francois Villoen from Lush of Fruit uh, is going to join me in this short talk on Farmable. So I'll give you a short overview on what we're up to here at Farmable, and then I'll pass it over to Francois, who is one of our users and a senior table grape manager here in South Africa. So I'd like to just give you a little bit of background on um, where uh, Farmable really comes from. Oh, there we go. So how it all began, Farmable got started at Norway's largest fruit farm, uh, which is co-owned by Larsh and Paul. And like many of us, Larsh and Paul a few years ago saw a rise in basically technology that was available for the farm and really got interested in, in how to evaluate this and understand um, really how to, how to move forward, what to select, what to implement, um, and how to manage all these data sets. Lars is also a technologist by background, um, and fast forward, uh, he has now become the CEO and co-founder of Farmable. So we have quite a lot of data streams that are, are coming at us um, at farms these days. Um, we've just talked to three different teams um, that are also providing you know, extremely valuable data sets to the farm. Uh, and overall, this is a really exciting opportunity that we have, I think, in ag, um, specifically horticulture, to change. Um, but with uh, this increase uh, in data, uh, begs the question of how we're going to manage this information. And that was really one of the core concerns that Lars had when founding Farmable. The two challenges that really resonated him um, with him as somebody who was sitting on a large commercial fruit farm, uh, as well as you know, evaluating technology was, how am I gonna use these different data sets um, if they're sitting in, in separate systems um, to really make strategic decisions for my business on the farm? And ha having a very, I would say, a uh, genuine concern for the fact that data needs to be cleaned and needs to be standardized in order to be used. Uh, and that manual collection of good data actually takes time. So this is really where Farmable came from. We're on a mission uh, as an ag tech team to reinvent how growers collect, manage, and use their data. 
So let's just dig a little bit deeper into what our ambition is at Farmable. First, we'd like to help growers, specifically horticulture growers globally, take two first steps. So we'd like to support the replacement of paper and spreadsheets with a easy to use digital tool. Farmable has a freemium tool that you can download today in your app store. This will also contribute with simplifying communication across the farming team. So we've been on a journey now for three years as an ag tech team. Two years ago, we put our first uh, product on the market and the benefits that farm managers who have been downloading Farmable and using the tool, um, what we really hear from them is that they feel a sense of total control over their orchard activities. You can track all types of crop treatments uh, and farm operations in Farmable. There's also a strong appreciation growing for simplifying documentation. So by planning, delegating and tracking a job in Farmable, you simplify and automate that documentation um, for compliance reports. We enable you to easily connect uh, all the data you need for a global gap uh, compliance audit. And what we're really setting up for in the future is by easily capturing data in a standard form, of course, that's gonna make it simpler to look at this data over time. And we're gonna have some future tools um, that support that kind of analytical work. Getting down to really understanding the profitability um, per block on the farm also becomes a lot easier when we start setting up the data in a standardized way. Um, and of course, coming back to one of you know, the overarching concerns is we don't want data all sitting in separate systems so our ambition is to be that platform where we're open, we allow you to integrate other technology tools that you're using. That could be a tool like PixoFarm or FruitLook or iLeaf. So if you open up your phone today and you went to your app store, what you would see for both Apple and, and Android tools um, is the Farmable app, which you can download and use today. Essentially, that's a data capture tool for planning, delegating, and recording work. We've also, just in the last year, launched our Farmable web portal. So this is a complementary desktop tool that you can use to report and analyze information. We'll just go one step further into the app and to the desktop tool. So first in the app, if you were to open up the Farmable app, the first thing you would do is map your blocks. And then you'd have the opportunity to plan, delegate, and track any type of farming activity, whether that's spraying, pruning, thinning, fertilizing, irrigation. These are all activities that you can plan, you can delegate to your operators, and then you can track with uh, real-time GPS progress. That allows both the operator and the farm manager to experience real-time feedback, as you see in that middle screen there, getting a live track of where your operators are. We also have a scouting feature. So you can take notes on pests and disease that are found in the field. Advisors really like this to capture what they find on a scout walk, and they can share that immediately with their farm managers. No waiting to go back to the farm office and type up a pest and disease report. Finally, we also have a, a free harvest capture log, so you can capture harvest results uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. Beyond the freemium app and the features I just described in the app, we have the web portal. You can always log into the web portal for free and visualize all the information you're collecting in the app. However, we've also just recently launched our first paid product, which is called Treatment Reports Plus. In South Africa, this product is 900 rands per farm per year. We don't price based on how large the farm is, or how many users. You can invite as many operators, advisors, or farm managers to your farming account in Farmable. So what that 900 rand per year unlocks is an unlimited amount of exports, PDF, Excel, spray reports that you can customize and download for your compliance requirements. All right, and like most technology companies, we've got lots of work ahead of us. Uh, in the near term, one of the features we will be launching is called Teams and Timesheets. 
This is essentially a productivity management tool. So you can track all the hours worked on the farm, whether it's with your seasonal labor or with permanent staff members. Probably looking into early next year, we will launch our analytics tool. Again, this is a, a desktop tool and looking at using weather data uh, and alongside analogical milestones plus operational data. So imagine having, being able to overlay you know, your soil humidity, your air temperature with phenological milestones from this season, also having the context of what are the crop treatment activities that have happened you know, in the last few days. So I thought just before I hand it over to Francois and he can tell you his experience with Farmable, I'll just take a, a moment to share our progress so far. Farmable is a, we're a three-year-old company. We launched this digital platform two years ago. Um, we're quite excited to be present in six core markets. Uh, those are Australia, New Zealand, Spain, Germany, UK, and of course, South Africa. South Africa, we've come to most recently. We started working directly with South African farmers 10 months ago. Uh, and in 10 months, we've onboarded 870 farms. And um, a lot of those are, of course, early stage. They're mapping their blocks. They're testing the platform out. And they're getting ready for the seasons that are coming up. Um, but it's very encouraging. And so I'm, I'm really excited um, that we've got about 30 uh, participants on the call today and hoping to connect with many of you in the breakout session later. Okay, one of those 870 farms is uh, Lush of Fruit, an organic table grape and blueberry producer. Um, as I mentioned before, Francois is the senior uh, table grape manager there. Uh, he manages uh, the production and packing of the grapes. And he picked up Farmable back in March um, and has offered to share a little bit of, about his experience with technology uh, as a uh, you know, firsthand as a farm manager in South Africa. Thank you for the introduction. Um, as Kay said, um, I think us as, as farmers these days, um, Kay, just, I just want to make sure you can hear me. All right, sorry. Um, I used to carry um, a pocket diary, a normal diary, running around with a tablet um, just to, to capture daily activities. Um, we've got more than enough options with um, spraying programs, but there was nothing to capture um, pruning or, or harvesting or manual labor activities. And I, I got to use them uh, or, or stumbled upon them um, and that's one of the functions that sets them apart from, from the other guys. Okay, if you can just update the slide for me, please. Thank you. Um, so one of the stuff we, we are um, continually um, working around with or, or info that, that pops up in decision-making is uh, block size, vines per hectare, um, block data um, so if you open your app um, on the first on the first image there on the left you've got your whole farm overview my my farm overview um, clicking on a on a block then will open up the middle the middle image where you can see um, variety um, plant date uh, row spacing plant spacing number of plants um, etc um, the third the third picture on the right um, would slot in just below the middle picture um, on the app where it would show you a timeline of jobs completed, um, jobs in progress and planned jobs for the future. That at the, at the moment is um, we've sprayed, um, spraying jobs, um, pruning jobs, um, as well as field notes, observations. Um, next slide, please, Kay. Um, observations, um, scouting, um, anything odd with that block. Um, a nice thing about that is um, 
my production assistant, Easton, um, is also linked to this. So there's there's no there's no WhatsApp groups or forgot to mention this or it it, it um, cancels that out. If if I see a problem, I can immediately log it um, on a note. Um, he can see it and we can go um, address the problem or see something. Um, in the first um, image on the left there, it was a case of, of irrigating, irrigating, and um, the screenshot um, there at the bottom was no reaction from our, from our soil moisture probes. Um, so immediately I could lock the job and, and tell him, listen, we need to, we need to go there. Um, check it out and he can he can pop in a comment um, and say you look um, either the dripper was um, blocked or or the valve didn't open for that matter but but we can get feedback with without actually having to to communicate to each other um, the middle the middle image was um, again just a note um, in a block of flame with with a, a few pictures attached for pruning wood so it, it really becomes almost like a diary, um, a photo diary, a notes diary. It, it almost takes away your need for, for having a physical diary in your, in your bucket when you farm. Um, again, the note on the right, um, worm eggs, attach it. Um, we can go, you can pin drop the exact location on that as well. And we can go back in a week, a week or two weeks time um, and you can actually see, listen, um, was the, is, has the issue worsened or, or is, it, is it away? Um, is, there, is there cause for concern? Um, another thing, they've got a scouting function. I don't have um, photos of that, but um, the fact that your scout you can share what your scout finds with photos immediately to your um, chemical advisor. Um, makes it some makes it unique. Um, I think I think uh, if if yeah try try the program like like I said it's it's free. Um, see if it works for you. You can create um, multi location jobs. You can add, uh, like I said, uh, the the picture on the left here as well as as jobs that I that I created. We're running at the moment. We're running block maintenance. We're running in irrigation maintenance. Um, we're making holes for to to apply organic fertilizer, um, and it's it's all jobs that that you we used to well I used to um, I had to jot down in a diary. And now, firstly, I think a lot of farmers are very bad with, with admin on the admin side, um, myself included. And this just becomes real time. Um, we're on our phones the whole day, but we, we're reluctant to open a, a diary to jot down. So with the app, um, immediately start a, start a job, schedule a job. Um, and as soon as it's done, we can, we can confirm the job and it, it goes, goes and lies there in the, in the blocks um, history. Um, yeah, that's about it. The way the way I implement the the app in my day to day life at the moment. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Francois, for sharing a little bit about your own experience. Francois and I will both be available in the breakout room. So I'll just kind of quickly wrap up here, and then we can see if uh, uh, Chantel has a chance to give her her internet another go here. So just you know, to recap, it's a free tool. The mobile app is free. Um, for crop treatment activities, monitoring harvest and sharing notes. Um, you can always view your data in the web portal. And the first point of purchase uh, is really around uh, exporting treatment reports and there'll be additional um, features coming in the future. And so you can download it and come and chat with Francois and I um, either in the breakout room or please feel free to take my contact details and, and follow up with me um, at a later date. All right, perfect. So uh, I think uh, before we wrap up, Kay, uh, you had something to say? Yeah, thanks, Speedy. I just wanted to mention, uh, I know we've got a lot of growers uh, on the call today. Um, there is a, a growing WhatsApp community um, for South African fruit growers. If you'd like to join, um, it's, for, it's for horticulture growers and advisors. You're welcome to click the link and, and join there. All right, perfect. 
Thank you so much uh, for your time, everyone. And uh, we are going to open the breakout rooms. But before we do that, uh, I want to thank all the presenters from uh, iLeaf, Pixofarm, and uh, Fruitlook for their time and uh, their patience in walking us through uh, their respective products today. And thank you as well, uh, Kay, for taking her time and uh, roping in Francois to give his point of view as well as to how he's actually using uh, the tool on his farm. So. Once again, I want to uh, just reiterate that this was a joint webinar that we put together to bring accessible ag tech to South African fruit growers. And if you like it, please feel free to give us feedback on our social channels, uh, join the WhatsApp group that uh, Kay has put. And uh, thank you once again. And I will now open the breakout room. So whichever room you are interested in and whichever speaker you are interested in talking more, you can head to those breakout rooms. Uh, it will close in 20 to 30 minutes, depending on uh, the conversations between yourselves and the respective speakers. Uh, so that's uh, that's it from me, uh, Vidhi, and I hope to see you again in ensuing webinars. So I'll just open the breakout rooms. Thanks, Vidhi. Thank you so much. <laughs>